how is everybody? Welcome to what feels like the journey to the centre of the earth. It isn't as bad as Almeria, that the, you would see no grass or anything if this was Almeria, but it is certainly getting there. This is the south coast of Mercia, um, Equila de Campo, if anybody wants to look on the map. We are heading to Polpi though. This area grows a lot of iceberg lettuce for the UK, especially around Aguila de Campo. All this would be iceberg lettuce. If you go to Morrison's, it comes from this area. Tesco's, it's from this area that I just know of because I shop there and I deliver into there. But also a lot of other fruit and veggies from this area as well and of course um, there is a demand for strawberries at Christmas so that's why they have all the plastic. But whilst my son is a farmer down in Cornwall and they provide a lot for the UK market I guess this must be cheaper. And whilst I know that this is how they make their money down here, I would encourage everybody to buy British if they can, buy local, buy seasonal, and we wouldn't have so much plastic. I may be doing myself out of a job, I know, but I'm keeping my son in one. So, first collection is Blima Fraw again, I've been here before. Um, regular collection, they do a lot of export into the UK. We are loading Euro pallets, which is pretty unusual because we don't normally load the small ones. We normally load the big standard UK pallets. These size pallets are always used on the continent, but we don't normally use them. They call our pallets, the normal standard pallets that we use, they call them American pallets. But these pallets go across ways, you get three across the trailer with this, so you get 33 of these type pallets on, whereas with the standard UK pallets you get 26 pallets on. We don't normally load these pallets because everything in the UK is geared up for the bigger pallets and some supermarkets will reject the goods that are on these pallets. So we've got that on. We've got another collection um, further up the road just to fill it out. I think there's um, mm, I think there's maybe eight pallets there or something like that. But um, it's obviously all going to be Euro pallets because it will be 33 pallets by the time we get there. The customer obviously knows that that's what they're getting. Oh, New Holland tractor, just like my son's, but maybe a little bit bigger, holding me up, blooming farmers. So we're going off in here just to fill out, I think, like I say, I think there's eight, eight pallets in here, but I think the address that I've got is wrong. Now this is only from experience because this company has two depots across 
the other side, one, one side of the motorway, one the other side of the motorway. And I know this one's here, but we very rarely load out of this one. But this is the address I've got. This is the one that on my paperwork. So this is one I'm going to go to and see. I think this is more like for um, packing in, inbound, if you see what I mean, and local stuff. I'm only saying that because of other lorries that I see come in here. I reckon I want to go across the road, but we'll see. So at the risk of sounding a smart aleck, the late, I spoke to the lady and she said, are you sure it's here? I said, no. She said, are you sure it's not across the road? I said, no. She said, let me ring them and ask them. So we are now across the road. The reason that I didn't, I went to the address that I'd given because that's what I was given. Now the guy that we're doing the work for is a lorry driver. He owns his own lorries and has been doing this job for a million years. So I do what he tells me to do because there may be a, some reason that I don't know of that I want to go to that place. But I just, it's just one of them things that's in the back of my head and I thought, no, I'm sure this isn't right somehow. But that's just from doing the job. But like everything changes, so it might have changed. So anyway, we're going over here. The first, you see how tight this road is. First time I came on it, it was pitch black. It was around Christmas time. But luckily, my friend gave me, that also did this job, and had been in here a million times, he gave me instructions, and he said, it gets really tight and it gets really narrow, so just be careful, take it steady, there's a little small bridge, the one we went over, he said, just go up and park outside, so that, so I kind of had an idea um, where it was and everything, but I frightened myself to death the first time I came down here. And with a lot of things in Spain, it gets really dusty, but you see this parking on the left here that I'm going to do now, this gets absolutely packed with lorries waiting to come in so um, maybe they're quiet maybe that's why we've only got eight pallets from them but i'll go in and see the guys inside park here walk across the road right place there's that there's our load so he's um we had odd odd two pallets so he's took them off turned them around just put them back on again and then he'll put the rest to be his stuff i think he's um moroccan i think you get a better idea how small they are at this angle they do, they're a bit wobbly but they're definitely a lot smaller and you can see the three across just a, a you can see it got more light in here than at the other place. These are all the cardboard boxes that obviously they go in. Now years ago, we used to fold all, it's been my summer job to make these boxes at home, UK boxes, but they're all glued now. We used to just have to fold them in a certain way, but these are all uh, obviously made up in a factory and glued together. Used to be a good job in the summer. I've had to uh, alter the suspension a little bit to make it a bit flatter for him to get these last three on. Um, he's very precise, he's, um, he's very good on his uh, barrow. I am looking at though is I don't know if I'm gonna get the bar done. See where the um, the bar normally goes into the edge. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a couple of straps out, I'm gonna put the bars in the pallet carriers 
you see see what i mean i won't get the bar the cups in there so although the back doors you can see you can see where the back doors go it's going to be quite tight but what i don't want is to get onto a bay and open the doors and have them come out backwards so i fiddled about and put the straps up it's only a couple of inches but if you're on a bay and you're reversing downhill the last thing you need is it to come out the back doors There we are, all locked and sealed. The fridge has been on and it's been on at plus three, which is what I was just told to put it on. I just want to check, now I've shut the doors and everything, that the temperature is coming back down again. Because obviously having the doors open, it went up a little bit. Just need to check like that, that it's coming down. Hello! Good morning, or should I say, good afternoon. I came up the road last night. There was nothing to film because it was pitch black. So I just thought I'd wake you up to uh, my morning, your lunchtime. This is the thing with running the fridge is that you have to get used to the fact that generally they pick in the morning, pack in the afternoon, and you load in the evening, which means that most of the time you're running late afternoon into the night. I finished early hours. Now, quite often I get people saying to me, why do fridge drivers park the opposite way? Why, is it lazy? Why don't they reverse into the parking space? Well, a lot of the times we will, but there is also a knack with working nights, especially when you work in a hot country, because what you want to do is have the trailer facing the sun in the morning. So what you don't want is as soon as the sun comes up in the morning, that it's going onto the windscreen and heating your cab up because you might have another six hours in bed before you've got to start work and the sun is blazing straight down onto your windscreen so if you can turn it round and park it the other way round like I have like that guy's done he's parked after me and it just means we get a little bit more time before the sun gets over the top and heats the cab up up here this is Navarar heading up to Pays Basque up towards the border it is my favorite road and it is my favorite bit of Spain well I do like uh, Galicia as well which is sort of on the same uh, height as this it's the north of Spain on, but on the other side that's very pretty as well but I just do, I do like the green I must admit Thing about northern Spain, as you can see, there are some big hills, not just in Navarra, Pays Basque, but also in Galicia, um, Cantabria, all across this top coast, there are some very big hills. The traffic delay on your route is now one minute. You arrive on time 11.51 pm. You are still on the fastest route.
like Wales. I, I like Wales. I don't live in Wales. I don't live in Wales. I live four miles outside Wales, but it is very green, very Welsh, I think, this bit of pass. Here we are, we run Spanish French border again. Let's go and see what our favourite customs man's got to say today. Actually, what I'm going to do, there's a couple of parking spaces here, they're supposed to be for customs, but I'm just going to pull over, change my country before I get the other side because the other side it just gets a bit chaotic. Seems quite quiet today. Everybody must be having a day off or something. There we are. Let's see how we go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, they're both playing on their phones. No, maybe we'll get through this one. I think. Yeah, everybody's fiddling with their phones. Okay, we'll go. Oh, he's looked up. That'll be it then. Oh, he's looked up as well. Let's see what they say. I try. I get myself confused sometimes because I forget which language I'm supposed to be talking in. So they're French, I should be speaking in French and then I'm, I'm using my best Spanish which doesn't make a blind bit of difference to them but oh we got there. And no I'm not going to Germany, I'm going to England which is what they asked me. I don't know why, I've already said I was going to England, I don't know why they thought I was going to Germany but let, let's just go shall we. Stunning sunset. 
It's actually raining. You can see on the floor. It's actually raining, and yet the sunset looks like the sky's on fire. Like I said this morning, it's uh, working on late um, back shift, whatever you want to call it. You get parked up late. I'm on the National 10. This is uh, the Routiers Maison Blanc. It's a weekend and the cafe is shut. Normally, you pull up to this barrier and it's closed and you take a ticket at that machine and when you go into the restaurant for your dinner, they give you a pass to get back out of it. They actually um, change the ticket and they give you one to get back out again with the barcode. But in the weekend, the barrier is open. You're allowed to park, but the restaurant isn't open, so you're allowed to park free. I mean, there's still quite a few that park here. Um, I, I park here because it's it's quite a safe place, relatively as safe as it can be. But what I do is. Um, I try and face away from everybody and just uh, park at the back because the fridge is running. And you don't do it on purpose to keep people up unless they're really annoying you. But you don't. A lot of people just really whinge and they do your head in about parking next to them with your running fridge. But they do seem to forget that if they want to eat fruit, vegetables, chocolate, or they want to have medicine, or eat fish or meat then it's all got to be refrigerated or heated in one way or the other so it's got to be running um, so people moaning about a running fridge really gets my goat because I just think don't eat don't take medicine don't eat anything at all even if you're a vegetarian your salad your vegetables have come in a fridge but anyway that's that's a different subject so I'll get off my rant, rant high horse, and I am, I'm going to bed. So I'll, I'll, I shall catch all, up with you all in the morning. Morning, let's go and do our check, shall we? This is a really interesting place. These are solar panels. So not only 
are we parking underneath them and they're keeping the heat off us so that we can sleep they're also supplying energy for the cafe way England's that way that way that way out to sea we're at uh, Khan just going over the bridge Oysteram is just other end of there which is where the ferry goes from so that's where we're going that way It is much better coming into Oysterham now. All the immigrants used to be on the right here, like they had like a, a little tent city going on there. But the uh, gendarmes and the council hoisted them out and um, put all bricks and these big boulders around everywhere to stop them make, setting up camp. It is much better and they've got a better security system going in. I mean, I'm not saying that immigrants aren't there, but it's it's more organised now, it's more the organised gang situation going on here now. As you can see here, um, I'm coming into the shed, so all this used to be open and used to be able to walk across here, there would be the smallest of fences on the right before the sea, they used to climb up and then they, at one time it, 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 they were like ants around here, but the local council have made a lot better. They've also got this heartbeat monitor here, so I have to get out the lorry. They put magnet. There's a, a monitor that they put on. It's got magnets on, and it te it listens for a heartbeat in the trailer. It also got cameras underneath that screen that he's looking at there. That's um, looking at the underneath of the trailer to see if there's any Klingons, as we call them. They tie themselves to the bottom of the trailers, and um, it would bring it all up anyway. So. Everything's good. Oh, there's my friend there, Nigel McKendry in his Ewing's lorry. So uh, I'm going to park here, I'm going to have a few hours here and then I'm going to do a ferry movement onto the boat and then I'll finish my break when I'm on the boat. It's a little, um, um, what's the word, it, it kind of upsets your system a little bit but it's not too bad, you get a few hours here, get on the boat and then go back to sleep again, that's how it works. Welcome back. I've had a couple of hours sleep, I've had three, four hours sleep actually, and uh, just going to get on the boat now, finish my break off. So in the morning I can just um, get off and do the deliveries. I'm not very awake, but I did get out and check everything again. And there is a guy, I think you might have missed him there. There's a guy who just checks as well underneath, looks underneath, makes sure there's nobody crawling about under. So I'll get on here and um, go back to bed. Not in the lorry, I'll go up to the cabin and I can get a shower before I get off in the morning. Oh, I thought for a minute, he's just waved me across, I thought for a minute I was going to go down the dungeon, which would have been a... This is always just takes forever to get down there and out again, it's just, uh, yeah. Never mind, we'll go, th all right, all right, calm down, we'll go this way. I might even be on the front door at this rate, that'll do. Getting very excited, that guy, waving his arms around. Anyway, 
like I said, I'm getting on here now. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. If you ring the little bell, you will get notifications of when I post again. And I shall catch up with you all next time. Everybody, stay safe.